Hey free to play gang welcome back to another video so in case you are busy or there is just way too much information for you to take in and you're still very confused this video should give you enough information to understand more about the entire divinet system everything that we know until this point but do take note that things are still subject to changes so for example they have already changed or maybe they have fixed the wording of Jin Yu Yao's divinet so that is one of the potential changes that we may see in the future so do take note that everything in the game right now is not completely fixed it is still highly subject to change and if there are any other changes i will of course update you guys all right so without further ado let's start off with how divinets look like and what they do so what you can see on the screen here is a donor divinet now as you can see there is an effect here linked to the tier that it's at so at tier 1 all the way to tier 3 you'll see that the final damage actually increases by a little bit as well as some of the stats that is provided by the divinet as well so these are the first few changes from d1 to d3 and now moving on from D4 to D6, things are a little bit different. You notice that everything else stays the same. The level of your divinet caps off at 30, which is acquired at D3, not so much at D4 and above. But the main difference here is that we now have additional base stats from D4 to D6. So I think most players can agree that D3 is probably a good place to stop if you want to maximize your resources. Now, some other things to take note of. So just like I mentioned, Jin Yu Yao, there are some changes. Let's take a look at what that change is. And also not all Espers have divinates, which is primarily, I think, the Epic Espers. Okay, so the main change in Jin Yu Yao is the wording over here. So previously it said at the start, of a round, the barrier has a 50% chance of getting speed up for one turn, which is completely garbage. But now they've changed it to at the end of her turn. This is what the er means here, right? So it's not a, the end of any turn, it's the end of her turn. The barrier has a 50% chance of getting speed up for one turn, which is a lot better than before. Now, some of you guys might be asking as well, what are the free divinates, if any? And there are some free divinates uh, provided in the game itself. So let's take a look at the tournament shop. So the first freebie you can see is the donor divinate side by side with the donor ripple over here. So you will be able to obtain a D6 copy of donor's divinate by just using a standard tournament shop points, which is also your, your supply vouchers, right? And then next, we can also obtain Lucas via the club shop. As you can see, next to Fabrice, you will be using some precious club materials in order to max out your Lucas, but I think it's kind of worth it because he gives himself speed up, which is really nice. And finally, in the club, in the cube shop, we will be able to obtain another d6 copy of camille and it refreshes so on and so forth actually you know what? i forgot to check this out but let's see how many fragments do we need to fulfill one entire divinate okay so from here we can see that we need 50 divinate fragments in order to fulfill one single divinate which means in order to get uh, our, a d6 copy of donna's divinate we will need uh, 300 no wait is it 300 yeah i think it's about 300 divinate fragments uh, in total so okay you know what because i'm nice i'm gonna do the calculation for you so we get 10 fragments every single week which means we need 30 weeks to complete the whole process and 30 weeks is 210 days wait are you serious <laughs> wait is my math wrong oh my goodness we need a long time to max out donor what the heck but we need 140 days for camille because there is more stock over here and the cube shop resets every two weeks and what about the club shop okay so lucas is gonna be a little bit faster than donor uh he's gonna take about 140 days as well i think i think about 140 days so yeah, Rip, Dona is going to take you 210 days to complete. I, I feel like this probably needs to be adjusted a little bit. And now next, we will receive quite a bunch of freebies when this update actually drops. We are not sure when that update is going to drop, but on the update itself, we will obtain 22,400 divinate, uh, divinate discs, which translates to 224 spins. And we will also obtain 1,000 divinate discs over a period of 7 days per day, which is a total of 7,000 or worth 70 spins. And then next, we have a new content here called the Falsetto Fantasy, which is a place where we can find more Divinate Discs, primarily just about Divinate Discs. So you, you can see that the rewards, right? They all center around Divinate Discs and a bit of Shimmer Records as well. So if you are in the top 100 placement, you will actually obtain 1,500 Divinate Discs on top of everything else, like on top of your three Shimmer Records as well per week. Yep, three Shimmer Records per week. But if you're at top 4%, which is over here, we will obtain 700 Divinet Discs and one Shimmer Record per week, which is also 28 spins per month. Oh, and I should mention that if you're in the top 100, you get 60 spins per month for free. And if you're in the top 15%, which I think most of you guys would be over here, you're only going to get 12 spins per month. And if you're a top 50%, that means like you're at least above average player in the game. <laughs> you get 6.4 spins per month and finally just by participating you will get 4.8 spins per month which is uh, really really sad because the disparity here is huge right 10 times the difference over here which is massive i don't think that it's healthy that it looks like that 
Now, another place where they suggested that we will be able to obtain dividend discs is via events. So you can see here that everything is question marked out because we do not know what the events look like and how free uh, these resources are going to come by. But some people have also voiced their suspicion that it's going to eat into your total gold record amount, which if, it's that, if that's the case, right, that's going to suck a lot because that's going to eat into your actual summons and that's going to reduce the total amount of summons that we get per month. I mean, I'm talking about the Esper summons at least. But I hope that's not the case and I... Uh, yeah, I can't really say for sure, but I just hope it's not the case. All right, now moving on to the Divinet Echo, you can see that we can select a single Divinet here, which means your selection is actually guaranteed. So whenever you pull for Legendary, you will get whatever that you have selected over here. All right, so it costs you 100 Divinet Discs per spin, as you can see on the right. And there is also a PT system in the Divinet Echo for every 100 spins, you will be guaranteed to get whatever that is featured over here. You will not be able to get any other legendary divinite discs except for whatever that you have selected here. And you can of course change your selection anytime if you feel like you want to get something else uh, and you can do it willy nilly, right? I think I used the word wrongly, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> so there is an average of 63 spins per legendary divinite, which is the long run average. So if let's say you have done 63,000 spins, you will expect to acquire about a thousand legendary divinites this way. This is just a long run thing, right? Some of you guys might not be able to appreciate what this means, but just think of it as like in the long run, because of the PT system, the amount of spins required to obtain your legendary on average is a lot less than 100. It's basically the same as your Go Record banner. Okay, but anyway, talking about Go Record banner, these are the rates right now. Okay, so before it looks something like this, there is a 1% legendary rate, a legendary Esper rate, and there is a 9% epic Esper rate, and there is a 90% rare Esper rate. But right now, we can split the pie into two, and the left side is actually going to mirror the right side. So many of you guys are still complaining that this is eating into our wish stones. This is not the case at all. Because the thing is, if you were to pull for a divinate, that would mean that you would have pulled for a rare Esper in the past, which is also no wish stones. So this is not going to affect your wish stone count unless they tweak the total number of gold records that we can get by events and reduce it that way. If that is the case, then yes, that is actually going to eat into our wish stones. If not, for the most part, it is not going to touch your wish stones at all. It's not going to affect anything related to your espers. Oh, and one more thing. Do take note that there is no selector over here in the gold record banner. It's completely random. So all the, all the divinates that you can obtain via the gold record pool is just completely random. There is like probabilities everywhere and it all adds up to 1%. And you notice that the shimmers actually have a much lower drop rate than the non-shimmer. So it's probably something that you want to consider when selecting your divinate over here. You might want to select your shimmers instead of your non-shimmer divinates just because it is so much harder to obtain shimmer divinates via the Go record banner. Now something else related to the Echo, we have the Divine Sequencer. So there is an update to a Divine Sequencer shop here. Essentially, whenever you pull for a legendary uh, divinate, you will obtain 100 divinate crystals. If you pull for an epic divinate, you get 50 divinate crystals and a rare will afford you uh, 10 divinate crystals. Now, what can you do with these divinate crystals? So we can use this currency to buy your sound matrix stone, which both have the same rate of 10 divinate EXP per divinate crystal. So for example, this one costs you 50 divinate crystals for 500 EXP. This one here gives you uh, 100 EXP for 10 divinate crystals. And you can also buy gold with this divinate crystal, which is kind of a shame. Like the use for these crystals is very, very little. So that's 100,000 gold for 200 divinate crystals. And finally, we can talk about the pay to win stuff, which is the plaza. Actually, you know what? I feel like this whole, <laughs> this whole divinate system is just very, very pay to win. I mean, just take a look at the falsetto fantasy spread over here. The best players in the game will get 60 spins per month. On top of that, they will get 12 shimmer records. But the worst or maybe like the most casual of players, maybe like the top 85% of the player base, you will only expect to get somewhere about 10 spins per month as compared to like the top player, which is insane. The, the disparity is just huge. So the Falsetto Fantasy in itself is very, very pay to win, extremely pay to win. So the Plaza itself, this is really crazy. There are some new packs over here. Uh, there is a Divinet Disc box, which I will not talk about. I mean, it's not as good as the pack on the left, obviously. So looking at the Rookie Divinet Disc offer here, in terms of USD, it costs you 10 USD for 30 spins in the Divinet Echo. It costs you 20 US dollars for 55 spins. I'm not going to consider the rest because they are like kind of garbage. and. It costs you 50 USD for 80 spins, one selector, this is a selector itself, and two legendary ability mod. This is insane. The value here is huge. And for 100 US dollars, you can do 120 spins. You ha also have two selectors and four legendary ability mod. Now, if we think about the selectors in the form of actual long run average divinate summons or rather divinate spins, 
one selector is worth 63 spins for a total of 143 spins worth and two legendary abilimon. And as for the 100 US dollars, that would be 126 more spins into uh, onto your 120 spins here. So for a total of 246 spins and four legendary abilimons. So very clearly, this is very pay to win and it's definitely benefiting players who are able to just afford like 100 US dollars. You can already select certain divinities that you need to have and you can just get your D3 and just move on with the next Asper. And it's so easy for you to, to max out any one of your Aspers because of the system where you're able to select the divinate that you want via the divinate echo yeah, over here. So you can actually select the divinate that you want, which is the biggest kick to like free to play players because casual players, you're only going to be able to obtain like so many spins per month. Whereas for paid players, you're able to just complete the board completely. You can just fulfill all your divinate requirements. And uh, yeah, there is definitely a huge disparity. So uh, yeah, that's it for whatever that we know about the divinate system right now. If you feel that there is anything else that I forgot to mention, please let me know down in the comments below and I'll like pin it or something like that, right? But anyway, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's content. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now that's it, it's been very free to play. And as always, I will see you in the next video.